Hello people, I'm Ginny Metherill and I'm a fourth generation witch. Today I want you to come and explore with me the magical realm of a witch's garden where nature and witchcraft intertwine. Within this garden, each plant holds its own unique power. From magical plants such as rosemary or bay, to the more potently medicinal plants such as feverfew and St John's wort. I like to integrate all my plants within each other to create the garden that I can use. not only just to sit around and read books in, but also as part of my unique practice and craft. For every corner of my garden is filled with botanical treasures. Well, treasures to me, be they weeds or flowers. I mean, mainly I like flowers, there's no two ways about it. And mainly I try and grow flowers, but I also grow quite a lot of weeds. But weeds can be used too. So this is my witch's garden. As a witch, my connection to nature is part of my everyday craft and practice. It is really my driving force to connect with nature and that is paramount to me. Here I cultivate a harmonious relationship with the earth and all its bountiful offerings so that I can use them not just in my craft or just in reading a book in its beautiful surroundings but also in my kitchen too. So it really does fill every part of my life. I use the energy of each plant and every plant in mindful practices. So when I tend my garden or cultivate my flowers, I'm there harnessing their energy to not only improve my own mental health, which can be a bit dodgy at times, you know, as everyone I'm sure is, but of course they also create powerful potions, spells and remedies. The process of harvesting herbs and gathering them in should really be involved with intent and therefore becomes a sacred ritual if you want. As long as you gather the herbs with the intent for the purpose that you have for them, or if you haven't developed that intent yet, to gather them with all their energy and to create as much of a powerful magnet to the plants as possible, then you are performing your craft. Each step, by gathering plants in the moonlight, for example, or grinding them in a mortar and pestle. If we put our energy and our intent into this, this means that the plants themselves take on that energy and take on our intentions. And it is through these acts that we channel the Earth's wisdom into our magic. In a witch's garden, I find that it's a really good idea to incorporate elements of my craft into the garden itself. Now, what I mean by this is, for example, here you can see I have a beautiful hagstone, which I've placed in the wall that we built around this bed. Don't look at the bed, it's filled with ground elder and it's not doing very well, which is why the hagstone is there, to protect it from negative forces. I also like to use crystals in my flower beds. Not only do the crystals impart their glorious energy into the flowers themselves so you could help for example a rose bloom in its fullest glory by putting a rose quartz at its base it also means that the crystal themselves will take on the energy of those plants. So if you can't or don't want to harvest the energy of that particular plant, you can use a crystal to pull the energy in and that can be its replacement. So a crystal grid would be great if you're wanting to power up your crystals in your garden. This all will amplify your Earth's garden's energy promote harmony and balance. Lots of other people like sacred symbols, which is also another great way to incorporate that energy into your garden. Symbols which are placed there with this intent will do as you ask them. Magic is really very simple. If you want it to do something and your intent is pure on that subject and not willy-nilly, remember fuzzy ideas get fuzzy results, you will put that magic out there. Here 
you can see that I am using some Guardian Gargoyles to protect her from negative forces. At the moment, of course, my garden is a full, beautiful floral display. Actually, it's not quite, because it's coming into July. So everything has sort of gone over its former splendour, but it will come back again in August. It is also a place for reflection and introspection. It's very good to look at our souls occasionally and look at our faults and see if we can improve ourselves. And here is a safe space within which I can do this. I do a lot of journaling in the garden so that I can put down my thoughts and take that sort of mess from my head and put it out on paper, which is one of the best ways to rid your body and your mind of confusion and over emotion and doing this in my garden helps me rid myself of those powerful all-encompassing emotions. It is within the pages of my journals that I weave the tapestry of my craft because I continuously learn by writing things down. Thank you for joining me on this journey through my witch's garden. I hope it inspires you to go out. You don't have to have a huge garden to do this in. Simple plant pots on a windowsill will work just as well. I'm filming this video on midsummer, which is rather exciting, so I'm hoping to bring the beauty of nature to your midsummer through this video. My Patreon meeting is coming up, our Midsummer Patreon meeting. We're doing telepathy this month, which should be fun. Telepathy is actually a lot easier than people think. And so come and join my coven and come and learn telepathy with us. I promise you, you will get what I'm talking about and be able to do it. Otherwise, please don't forget to like and subscribe because I can't continue to make these videos for you without your subscribing. So I would be really pleased if you could do so. And if you have any comments, let me know down below and I try and reply to as many as possible. And otherwise, I will see you all next week. Bye.